In the 1980s, Japan's economy was soaring. Growth slowed in the 90s, but it still got to the point where by 1995, Japan's GDP was a whole 73% that of the United States, pretty much as close as China is to catching up to the US today in 2023. With its booming economy and innovative technology, to many, Japan seemed almost poised to overtake the United States as the dominant world power. This belief was reflected not only in business and politics, but also in popular culture, particularly in science fiction. The film Blade Runner, for example, is set in the dystopian future Los Angeles in the year 2019. In the film, many of the buildings and advertisements in Los Angeles feature Japanese characters and culture, hinting at Japan being a world power at the cutting edge of technology and a powerful economic and cultural force in the US. Meanwhile, the United States is shown as a decaying and chaotic society, with many of its citizens living in poverty and squalor. Overall, Blade Runner's setting reflects the fears and anxieties of a society grappling with the idea of Japan becoming a world power and the United States falling behind. In more recent times, the game Cyberpunk 2077, based on the 1988 role-playing game, also features a world where Japan has become a dominant economic and cultural force, and where the United States is controlled by megacorporations that are heavily influenced by Japanese culture and aesthetics. This obviously never came to be. Japan's economic growth came to a complete halt following its peak in 95, essentially remaining at roughly 1995 levels till this very day. But what if analysts and sci-fi authors of the 80s were right? What if Japan's economic growth of the 80s continued, and it had surpassed the United States in economic might in the early 1990s? This is what we will explore in this video. First of all, for this to happen, a lot of things would have to change. Some of the biggest factors that caused Japan's stagnation were its declining birth rate, the 90s Japanese financial crisis, general corporate structural issues, and biggest of all was probably that pretty much every industry in Japan had become a financial bubble. I'm frankly not enough of an economic expert to know exactly how Japan could have avoided them. But in this scenario, they just magically do. In the real world in recent years, the Japanese government has implemented a series of reforms aimed at improving corporate governance. But in this alternate world, it happens much earlier on. The government predicts the coming crisis and makes swift changes as early as the 1980s. Action would also have to be taken to avoid the coming population crisis. Without the same economic issues, Japan's birth rate might not have collapsed as rapidly. It fell to around 1.8 in the 70s, but it was during the last decades where it dropped to an abysmal 1.3. In this scenario, it mirrors that of developed European countries more, perhaps doing a bit better and recovering throughout the 90s and early 2000s, hovering just a bit below 2. This alone would however not be enough to fix the population crisis, just as it wasn't in much of Europe. However unlikely, Japan would have had to open up to immigration to some extent. More than likely, they would predominantly come from Southeast Asia. Considering how much of Europe, through immigration, managed to avoid the same fate as Japan, despite having well below replacement level birth rates since the 70s, this probably would have worked. If Japanese economic growth continued on the same track as the mid to late 80s, it would have caught up to the US in the early 90s. Such growth probably couldn't continue forever. So in this scenario, let's assume they catch up to the US in 1995, and then growth levels off. By the modern day, Japan would have a GDP per capita of around 90,000, very high, among the highest in the world, and more than the real world modern US's 75,000. But not completely ridiculous, assuming just everything goes right for Japan, and its leaders have great decision making and foresight. Its population meanwhile, assuming a good birth rate and reliance on immigrants, would sit at around 186 million, and its total GDP at 16.7 trillion by today, a bit behind but comparable to our real world China. But how could this even be plausible? Could Japan even feed almost one and a half times the population? Well, none of this is particularly likely. Realistically, Japan could probably have surpassed the US in the early to mid 90s, only for the US to end back in the number one spot once again by the late 90s. And with Japan only being one of the world's major powers, with maybe twice as large an economy as in the real world. The world is frankly much the same, Japan is just twice as relevant. But that's no fun. If we want a superpower Japan like depicted in 80s sci-fi, one with the world's largest economy and influence across the world, Japan has to create a sphere of influence that can support its hegemony, much like how the US today is so powerful in part because of its vast sphere of influence and the modern globalized economy it played a major role in building. Japan is a series of islands without many resources or enough land to feed its large population, let alone an even bigger population. Of course, this isn't an insurmountable barrier in our modern globalized economy, but it does make Japan very reliant on other countries for imports. The American global order does currently keep these key supply chains Japan relies on secure, but the US might change that if Japan were to rival it in power. 
So for this scenario to happen, the United States would have to lose much of its power and influence like depicted in fictions such as Blade Runner or Cyberpunk 2077. Then Japan would have the opportunity to take its place in Asia, setting up a vast sphere of influence and maintaining the supply chains that can provide it with everything it needs to sustain its economy. Of course, none of this ever happened here in the real world, but geopolitical shifts like it are, and the way I keep up to date and verify news stories on changes in geopolitics is with the help of ground news. All news stories, especially on topics like geopolitics, have a bias, and no matter how much we try, it's inevitable we miss a story. But Ground News is a platform that actively tries to combat this by allowing you to compare how different media outlets report on the same story, such as this story on how a senior Russian general knew about Wagner leader Prigozhin's planned mutiny. Ground News allows me to see which outlets are reporting on this story the most. In this case, the story is slightly underreported by left-leaning outlets. It also allows me to compare headlines and stories by outlet, including reporting accuracy and bias scores, giving me a more complete picture of the real story. Especially useful if you want to get around your political bias is the blind spot page, where you can see which stories are underreported by left or right leaning outlets. All in all, Ground News is a great platform if you want a deeper understanding of what's happening in the world, as it helps you identify different media narratives, and it does so in a way I find more convenient and enjoyable than having to just manually go from news outlet to news outlet. So go to the link in the description for 30% off unlimited access to Ground News if you want to stay fully informed on breaking news and support their mission of making news more transparent. Thank you to Ground News for sponsoring this video. But how could the US fall from power? It might not be the most likely thing in the world, but this is fiction after all, so let's entertain the idea. We don't have to look further than actual real-life issues in the US both in the past and present. Geopolitical overreach, corporate greed and influence in politics, political polarization, economic inequality, there are many ways this could happen, and perhaps the rise of Japan could help fuel it. Realistically, it would have to be many problems building up and causing the US to gradually lose its relevance. As Japan surpasses the US economy in the 90s, and Americans lose jobs to globalization, much of it would be blamed on Japan, and the US might truly turn to isolationism in an attempt to bring manufacturing back to the US, and it might pull out of many countries across the world militarily as it turns its focus inward. This obviously hurts the American economy. It can't compete with cheap manufacturing in developing countries, and our modern global economic system is built around the US for the most part. If it wasn't there to secure lines of trade and police the world's oceans, there would be a decrease in global trade, which would hurt the US economy even more as most of its wealth is built on this globalized economy. This only fuels the fire. As the economy shrinks, politics become more polarizing. And there are protests, more crime, perhaps even actual coup attempts after a close election. The US might close itself off to immigration. This would result in the population stagnating and eventually shrinking as birth rates by the 90s here in the real world were well below replacement levels. The US in this world does not completely fall apart, but turns to isolationism and becomes more decentralized as state governments do their best to make up for the weakening federal government. Regardless of the exact events, we end up with a US economy that shrinks in the 2000s and stagnates throughout the 2010s. So by today, a US population at around 250 million and a total GDP that hovers at around 90s levels, making it the world's third largest economy only a bit ahead of Germany and well behind Japan and China. Per capita, about as wealthy as Portugal, Greece or the Czech Republic. So not a complete third world country, but certainly not among the wealthiest countries. Japan would take advantage of the situation in the US throughout the early 2000s. Japanese companies would take the place of the shrinking American ones and would eventually gain a lot of influence in American politics. As Japan grows and becomes an economic and naval power, it would eventually get a lot of its food for its growing population from the struggling but still very agriculturally rich United States. In a way, the relationship between the two would flip. There would certainly be resentment towards Japan in the US, but at the same time they would grow reliant on Japan for buying their food exports, and their politicians would become beholden to Japanese corporate interests, just as they are to corporate interests in general already in the real world. In Asia, Japan would grow its sphere of influence. Japan would likely gain a lot of influence in Southeast Asia and India through investments and common fears of a rising China. This would be key to protecting Japanese oil and gas imports from the Persian Gulf, where Japan would more than likely also develop a close partnership with several countries. Australia would likely also develop a close relationship with Japan, as it is resource rich, but small in terms of population and easily influenced by an economically powerful Japan. China in this world would still rise to some extent, although Japan would likely stunt its growth somewhat by investing heavily in building up cheap manufacturing in Southeast Asia and India. This would all create a bit of a cold war between China and Japan, and could also lead to Europe and Japan forming a partnership to counter China and Russia. How exactly geopolitics would develop in this world is uncertain. Major wars could break out. As US support for South Korea wanes, 
they would be in a precarious situation. Do they appeal to the Japanese who they aren't all that fond of, or the Chinese who are best buddies with their arch nemesis up north? In this scenario, South Korea bitterly accepts a defense pact with Japan, as China fails to provide a better alternative. But even with a strong Japan limiting China's growth, China wouldn't just sit idly by. They would likely attempt to coerce any Asian countries that don't have good relations with Japan or India, and aren't immediately threatened by Chinese expansion. In the Middle East, similar competition for influence would play out. Japan and China are reliant on the same exact trade routes from the Middle East through the Straits of Malacca, so it would be a pretty interesting dynamic. One of China's primary goals would certainly be to build up a strong fleet since as long as Japan controls the seas, China would be entirely at their mercy. Then again, that could build up tensions and start a war, maybe create a situation not unlike the Cuban Missile Crisis. Without American support, and with the US eventually withdrawing from NATO, Europe would be entering uncertain times. I imagine the European Union would grow closer and more cohesive, perhaps going on to even include some sort of joint military framework akin to NATO, as European countries do what they can to replace the loss of the US as a defense partner. But there would still be a period of time from the early 2000s to early 2010s, where European countries have yet to build up their militaries, and Russia would more than likely try to take advantage of that. I imagine Russia could manage to expand a bit further into Europe before the European Military Alliance builds up its forces enough. Broadly speaking, the American world order is replaced by a Japanese-European one. Both remilitarize and build up their fleets in order to patrol the world's seas and keep the world's supply chain stable. How long it would last is uncertain. Japan's hegemony would be highly reliant on a powerful fleet, so if any naval power rivaling it were to rise, it could end the Japanese world order in no time. This wouldn't have to be China. Japanese reliance on Southeast Asia and India for manufacturing could also come back and bite them. The United States getting their act together could also have the whole system crumble. Like with most empires, it wouldn't last forever. It might last 20, 50, or even 100 years, but at some point it would probably come crashing down as Japan is just too small and resource poor to support itself as a global superpower forever. Thank you to all my channel members, and if you want to see more content like this in the future, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button. See you next time.